Hi, I'm Kate from Make Haven, and I'm going to show you how to make a really simple and fast mask. This mask is designed for people who, like me, are very new to a sewing machine, maybe use a little in home ec back in the day, but don't remember it very well. Um, and also designed for people who want to help out in this pandemic and want to make a whole bunch of masks. So it's a very fast pattern. If you don't like hearing about things like seam allowances and a whole bunch of measuring and all of these kinds of things, this is a good pattern for you because it's going to be simple and quick and easy to adjust. So let's get started. The things that you're going to need to make your mask is some fabric, ideally cotton with a tight weave, at least 10 by 14 inches. You're going to need a ruler to measure that out. Got a yardstick, anything like that works. You need a pair of scissors. You're going to need something to use for the nose bridge. So I've got these little strips of metal, which are real great. Um, you can also use any sort of non-rusting metal. So if you have jewelry wire or gardening wire, you can cut pieces of that. I've even seen people use paper clips. You just want to make sure that you've curled in the ends there so they're not going to poke out. You can even use pipe cleaners. These are kind of loose pipe cleaners, very pliable. So I have folded it in half and twisted it to give it a little more heft, a little more hold. And you'll need elastic. You don't need this much elastic, but you'll need some elastic, at least about 14 inches for a mask. And then some additional things that you can get that will help you on your journey. An iron is helpful to have. And if you have any pins or any of these little quilting clips, I love these clips, those are great. And if you have any of these little snips, these scissors will um, help you out. So this is the mask that we're gonna make. Real simple, quick mask. It's got elastics for your ears. Pull it down with the pleats. You just pinch the nose bridge. Make sure you've got a nice good seal covered your nose and your mouth and you're good. It also has that pocket that I mentioned, which goes towards your face right here. This is where you can add a filtration material. You can put in a surgical mask, a paper towel, um, anything that is safe to use as filtration. The mask is 10 by 14 inches for a standard adult mask, but because it's made from a simple rectangle, you can scale that very easily. I have found that 10 by 14 is a good size for adults. You can go down to nine by 13 for people who have uh, smaller or thinner faces or teenagers. And then if you're making them for children, eight and a half by 12 and a half is a good size to use. But again, you can experiment and find a size that works for you. So I've got this big scrap of material here and you can cut it if you really like to cut. If you have some nice scissors, one thing you may want to invest in if you're making these are some nice fabric scissors that you only use for fabric. I am going to just go ahead and measure this out to 10 inches. Now, my preferred method is just to do a little snip and then rip. It's fast, it's easy. I don't cut really well in a straight line, so that works well for me. Um, and then I can just take my 10 inches and measure up to get the 14 that I need. Give my little snip and then rip. If you do prefer to use your scissors and you want to cut a straight line, if that kind of, if this drives you a little nuts, one thing to keep in mind if you're new to cutting is to keep your scissors right flat on the table and to cut and keep them right on the table as you're cutting. That's gonna get your best cut. Uh, but again, if you're like me and you're going for speed, go ahead and rip it. So once we have our squares, however many you wanna start with, we're going to go and I'm going to move over to the ironing table. So especially if you're new to sewing, the iron can really help you out. I've got my 10 by 14 inch rectangle here. I'm giving it a quick press. And then I'm going to fold my first seam. Again, I promise very little measuring. So all you're going to do is just fold once, fold twice, and then we're going to iron that down. If it helps you, if you want to use any of the clips or the pins, you can. Um, but I found that just a, a good iron, getting that as straight as possible on both of the narrow ends is all you need to do. So you'll just repeat that step for as many as you have, and then we'll head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are at our machine, ready to start sewing. 
If you're not super familiar with your machine, I wasn't when this pandemic started, it's a great time to go ahead and take a look in your manual. You can probably find a manual online if you've lost the actual manual. And just follow all the steps for the threading. Every machine is a little bit different, so that's an important piece to make sure that you're doing that correctly. Once you've got your machine all threaded, it's a good idea just to take a scrap of material and put it through just to make sure that your stitches look like what you want them to look like, that everything's coming together nicely, all that stuff. So, do that real quick. Everything looks great. Okay, so you wanna make sure that your tail, the extra thread here, has a little bit of extra room. When your machine starts, it pulls the, the thread, the leftover thread into the machine. So if your tail is real short, you'll unthread your machine. Super frustrating, try to avoid that. All right, so right in here, we're just gonna sew this seam right here. I've extended these little lines, uh, which are guides, down using a simple little trick of putting different colors of electrical tape. Learned this from one of my sewing friends uh, to help sew in a straight line. So if your machine doesn't have lines that go all the way down, that can help. I'm gonna start sewing. After a couple of stitches, I held back here to do a back stitch. Just helps keep it a little bit stronger. And I'm gonna sew all the way along this seam. When I get to the end, do a quick back stitch. Now, when you're done, remember to lift your presser foot and you should be able to pull gently, comes right out. If it's catching, turn the wheel towards you a little bit and maybe in the middle of a stitch and you just wanna get that to release. Trim your sides and then do the same thing on the other side. So if you're doing multiples, it's great if you can do a whole bunch at one time, but find whatever rhythm works for you. Once you've got this set, this is where those snips come in real handy. Also, if you've used my wonderful ripping method, you may find that you'll have some loose threads along the side. So if you need to snip those as you go, you can. Um, if you have a sewing helper who may not be good with the machine, but who wants to help out and make some masks, this is a great job for them, having them trim off all of your edges while you keep going. So if you've got a child around, a partner, a dexterous cat, go for it. So now we've got our seams in and we're going to put the wrong side of the material out so that's this is the right side the side that you want to see in the end and this is the wrong side in some materials it's not as obvious and sometimes some fabrics like tie-dye sometimes you can't even tell the difference in this case it's pretty obvious so i'm going to put the wrong side down and i'm going to make my pocket shape so in the original pattern that this was based on she puts the pocket right in the middle um, after I've experimented with it a little bit, I like to put it in some different places. Um, the reason for that is I find that when the pocket is right in the middle, it ends up right in front of my lips, which isn't as, as comfortable for me when I'm wearing it. Um, it also makes it a little bit easier to make the pleats for me if it's not right in the middle, but you can definitely experiment with wherever you want that. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pocket all the way down at the bottom. So I'm gonna fold this just at the tiny bit at the bottom and I'm gonna bring the top down to here. So that's what our pocket's gonna look like. Then you can take your elastic. If you don't like to measure, and I always try to save time wherever I can, you can just estimate from the top to the bottom. It's usually a pretty good estimate. I've learned that this elastic is really tight and I like a little more space. So if I'm using that method, I'll just measure it out here and then just add a little bit. But you can also have your ruler handy if you want and go ahead and measure. Um, seven to eight inches tends to be a pretty good size for most people, but again, check with your elastic, experiment, find what works best. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make those two elastics for the ear loops. Now what we're gonna do is put these inside. So basically this is what it's gonna look like on the inside, it's gonna be these little C's. So when we turn it right side out, they'll be out where our ears are. This is a time when I find the clips to be super handy. Also to keep this shape, you can pin it. I find that just a quick finger press, running your finger along the line um, is enough, but if it makes you more comfortable, you can iron these edges. And you just take this right here, stick that out just a little bit. Now, I, again, I love these clips because I'm clumsy and I don't poke myself, um, but if you prefer pins, you can definitely use pins. And then I'm gonna take the other end and stick it. I'm leaving just a little bit out so I can make sure that I've stitched all the way through it and really trapped that elastic in there so it's nice and secure. So I'd leave a little bit sticking out. 
and do the same thing on the other side. One thing you want to be careful with is that this seam here, if you, if you don't have this top seam measured right, this is going to gap like that or not quite fit right. So if you're having any trouble with that, um, you can definitely add some pins or even add some clips right here, wherever your, wherever your opening is, just to keep that a little bit clearer. So we've got that all ready to go over to our machine. I like the, to just slide off the clips real quick as we go. I'm gonna put that presser, presser foot down. Now in this case, because I'm going along here, I try to do the back stitch right along where my elastic is. That helps secure the elastic a little bit more. So I'm gonna start sewing, back a few stitches, and then all the way down. You wanna make sure that you've got that elastic in that C so you're not running over it as we go. Keep going. Another area to watch for is as we get to these openings, making sure that this is going under your presser foot and not getting caught up on those feet there all the way down and back stitch a little to secure that and off same thing on the other side now that we have those two side seams done we're going to go ahead and snip our extra threads some people do like to snip the corners as well to get a little bit of a smoother corner when you turn it inside out i don't find that that's super necessary and if I mess with it too much sometimes I get nervous that I'm gonna mess up my elastic holding but if that's something that's important to you you can snip off all four corners just make sure you don't go into your seams so now we just reach into the pocket pull on the elastic it's a good way to turn it inside out that's a good test to make sure that your elastic is well attached and we're gonna turn this right side out now again remember that I've kept the pocket opening down at the bottom, but you can decide where you want yours. But at this point, we're gonna put in our nose bridge, so we wanna make sure that we know what the, where the top is. So I'm gonna grab my piece of metal. I've cut these to about five and a half inches, but you can decide what works well for you. Um, and I, after I cut them, I sand down the corners. Um, it's important that these aren't sharp and poking because as they get washed, we don't want them to poke out um, and break the mask. Um, another trick that you can do if, if you have pieces of metal is, I learned this from another one of my sewers, is get a hot glue gun and just put a little dab of hot glue on either end, soften your edges right up, that dries super fast. So once you have your nose bridge, we're just going to go inside, so I'm opening up inside and putting it right along the top. So it's now in our pocket right here at the top, at the very top, um, especially as you're, as you're learning this. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and clip or pin this in place just to give you a good sense of where it is. Again, you want to make sure that as you're sewing, everything is lined up so you're not accidentally pulling tension and opening up your pocket. And now we're just going to sew a little line right along here, along the top to trap that nose bridge. One thing to keep in mind with this piece right here is that you really want to know where the end of your metal is and to feel it, how deep into your pocket is because you do not want your needle to hit down on that metal. That is a fabulous way to break a needle. And although I've heard that you are a real sewist, once you've broken a few needles, it can be a little jarring. A little back stitch. As you get to the clips, you just wanna remove them. And I'm keeping my fingers right on that metal that I can feel through the fabric, just to make sure that I'm keeping my needle from hitting it and breaking. Now, if you have a shorter nose bridge and you're concerned about it shifting back and forth, you can do just a couple little stitches on either side to kind of trap it even more. I really haven't found it to be a problem. So again, going for speed, not something I really bother with. So now we've got that piece done. We're gonna trim off our threads and we're gonna head back to the fancy, head back to the fancy ironing station to get our pleats in. So I've got my nose bridge in, so here we know is the top, and I'm gonna make the pleats. So to make the pleats, I just put my middle finger underneath and my pointer finger is right at the top and just fold it up. Once I've got that, I'm gonna put a little clip on the side. You can also iron, I'll do that in just a second. Ideally, if you can, remember to put your, your pleats 
so that from the front they're facing downward. That's one recommendation that has come out just because if there are particles, that way the particles are more likely to drop down rather than to be trapped within the folds of the mask. Not a major thing. Um, what is an important thing is to make sure that all of your pleats are going in the same direction. So again, here I am at the back of the mask. You can tell because it's got its opening. I always like working from the back because I can keep an eye on that opening. If you can't see the opening, sometimes you might make a pleat that makes your opening all wonky. So I've got the first one, usually three pleats is what most people do. So again, just folding, making a little Z on the side, kind of nest right together there, put a clip on, and then my third one right along the bottom. Um, that one tends to be a little trickiest. So at any point, if you want to, you can just put your iron on there. That just helps stabilize everything. One thing to keep in mind, keep the iron away from the elastic. Most elastics will melt, become brittle, become not usable. So make sure that they're clear out of the way. And we're just gonna do our final pleat here. I'm just folding that up a little bit. And then we've got our third pleat. Clip and press. Then all we have left to do is sew these down and we'll be good. So again, the ironing isn't mandatory, but especially as you're getting comfortable with this, it'll probably make it a little bit easier for you. So there we have it. There's the front of our mask. There's the back. Got all of our pleats facing the same direction. We're gonna head back to the sewing machine. Now we've got all our pleats in place and we're just going to sew along the two sides to keep our pleats in place. One thing that I have found um, is that it will make your life easier if you're sewing in the direction of your pleats rather than going towards the pleats because then you have more opportunities to get caught both within them there and within these little things which I recall, was calling feedy things. I've learned they're called feed dogs. These little things down here, um, you want them working with you, not working against you. So go ahead and I'm gonna put this right in the side here. Once I've got it into place and I'm kind of holding it with my hand, I can pull out these clips. Put the press, press or flip down, right on the side here. At this point, you wanna make sure you know where your top metal piece is and make sure it hasn't slid up here so you're not gonna slam into it at the end. So I'm feeling mine is right here. We're all clear, holding it, forward and back, and then just driving right over those pleats. Forward and back, great. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Normally I would turn it all the way around, but again, when I was talking about making it easier, going in the direction of the pleats, because the mask is not a super large garment, you can just slide it up this way. That may be cheating for some sewists, but it works for me. Find what works for you. All right, so go right in there. Again, I'm checking on where my metal nose piece is. Mine is a little close there, so I'm gonna scooch it back so it's out of my way for sure. And then I'm just going to making sure to keep that pocket area clear and closed. And there you go. Press the presser foot, pull it out, and now all we have to do is last little bit of trimming. And there we go, we've got our mask. It's got our pocket in the back. Again, the pocket faces towards us. The top here, we can feel the nose bridge. Ready to go. And we have a mask. Um, I wouldn't test them all out, especially if you are going to be donating them. I do recommend washing them before donating them. It's just best practice um, and, and trying to uh, use clean or gloved hands as you're handling them. So the original pattern for this did not have the nose bridge piece in. That is an option if you want to skip that step to make it even faster. It only adds a couple minutes and I found that it's really helpful. It especially helps people who wear glasses to help prevent fogging and gets a nice tight fit. So if you can do it, I would say do it. The other thing is that we are using um, elastic, as I mentioned, but if you prefer to work with ties, um, you don't have elastic or you just want to make ties, it's the same thing in that early step when we're inside out, instead of putting our C in, we'll just put ties, one and two, three and four, and just sew those in. So those are your options, happy sewing. Here are some simple and quick instructions. Ripper cut the fabric into a 10 by 14 inch rectangle or to size. Double fold the 10 inch sides and press or pin in place. 
Make a seam along each folded side. Fold into a pocket shape with the wrong side facing out. Place about 7 inches of elastic in a C shape on either side of the mask and pin or clip into place. Sew the seams along the left and right side to trap the elastic and complete the pocket. Turn the mask right side out. Slide the nose wire piece into the top of the mask and sew a seam just underneath it to keep it in place. Make three pleats all in the same direction. Clip, pin, or press in place. Be sure your pleats don't interfere with the opening in the back. Sew along the left and right sides to secure the pleats. Well done. Thanks for sewing.